Hi there! In this tutorial you're going to get a basic intro into iClone 5's new physics engine, the basic capabilities and UI, as well as embedded physics objects. iClone 5's physics props can be found in the Props section under Physics Props. There are a number of soft body physics objects such as cloth sheets, as well as solid objects like basketballs and tables. I'm going to import in this basketball first by clicking and dragging. The first thing you'll want to know about iClone Physics is the Physics Settings panel. You can access this by pressing the large button found in the Modify panel to the right, or you can simply click the icon on the top right of your stage here, or just use the Shift F9 hotkey. You'll see at the top of the panel I can toggle the active physics on and off by checking the box at the top left. There are a number of physics states here, and each state will give you a different result. Dynamic objects are influenced by the environment natural forces such as gravity, or external forces such as other objects. Kinematic objects have the highest priority, and can push dynamic or frozen objects around the stage. Static objects can't be moved under any condition, and simply act as barriers in most cases. Frozen objects are similar to dynamic objects, but they stay frozen in place, until another seen object interacts with them. There are a number of different property settings as well, such as mass and elasticity. These basically give each prop different reactions to its environment. You can find out more about them in our other physics tutorials. At the bottom of this panel are the different bounding types. These are important for determining the shape your object adopts to interact with the environment. You can see that with my basketball, I'll probably want to stick with the sphere shape as that seems to be the most suitable. I'll close this down now and import in an important physics prop called the infinite plane. This is a predefined platform that will stretch infinitely in all directions, yet is represented by a small purple square. The infinite plane is a static object that won't move regardless of interaction. I'll give you a quick demonstration of dynamic and static interaction by lifting up this ball here and playing the animation. You'll see that when I play back, the basketball will fall and bounce on the infinite plane. I have the basketball's physics settings open, and you can see that if I try to switch the state of the basketball to static, it won't move, as dynamic is the only state that will react to gravity without first being hit by another object. Let's take a quick look at soft body settings now. You can simply click over to the soft body tab, and your basketball automatically changes properties. You'll see that when I play back, my basketball will deflate like there is no air inside, and the outside is soft like cloth. You can select from the drop-down menu at the top to see different default templates such as this softball. You'll see the different results when I play back. You can learn more about softbody physics in our softbody physics tutorials. The infinite plane is a super useful tool, but you can also use a conventional platform prop to do the same function as well. The first thing you'll want to do is import in your platform. Open the physics setting and assign it a static state. This will essentially give it the same properties as an infinite plane. So if I import in a couple of these dynamic physics props and play back, you will see them all just fall and bounce off the platform. I'm back using the infinite plane now, and I'm going to explain a little bit about the world settings options. For now, I'm going to return it to hard body physics, but then enter into world settings. Here is where you can change the settings such as gravity and world perspective. The gravity is naturally negative 9.8 on the Z plane by default. If I change that to negative 2, you'll see that the ball will drop a little bit slower due to the smaller force of gravity. If I put the gravity up to 2, you'll see that the ball will actually float away. Be aware that when you change these settings, it will affect all the physics objects in your scene. The world scale can be changed as well. Just think of it as if you put the scale larger, things will seem like you're a giant in a movie and will move around quicker like ants. If you put the scale smaller, you can imagine things like if you're an ant looking at big humans walking around. Now I'm going to tilt my infinite plane a little bit to demonstrate how it works in more detail. You can see now that when I play back, because of the tilt, the ball will roll down the plane until infinity. You can place infinite planes anywhere, and they will form invisible barriers in whatever direction you put them in. 
you can see that when I place another infinite plane intersecting the first one, that it will create a barrier for the rolling ball. You can use the Ctrl D hotkey to toggle the dummy option in the modify panel to make the planes invisible. In the cloth section of the physics props, you can find a selection of different soft body cloth props. Some of them have pins on them like this one, which can be moved around to form things like a cape, flag, or curtain. If I move ahead on the timeline and then move my cloth a bit to the right, you'll see the effect of movement on the cloth. Infinite planes will also affect physics cloths as well. If I add in this infinite plane and tilt it a little bit, the playback will result in the bottom section of the cloth conforming to the shape of the slanted plane, like you see here. When dealing with scenes that require heavy physics calculations like this one with soft body objects, it's always good to have your playback mode as frame by frame, like you see at the bottom here. The frame rate will go much slower, but the physics calculations will be more precise. This isn't the case with real-time playback. If I switch it over to real-time mode, you'll see that when I play back, the scene will move faster, but the calculations won't be precise and will mess up the scene. This is especially true for scenes with soft-body objects that require more calculations. In this next scene, I have four basketballs selected. iClone allows you to change the physics settings of multiple objects at the same time. So if they're all selected, just enter into the physics settings window and we'll change the elasticity of all the balls to 100. Elasticity affects the amount of bounce the object will have when it makes contact with another object. I'll set each one of these basketballs to different elasticity settings now to demonstrate. When I'm finished with that, you'll see that when I play back, the balls will bounce different heights. The last thing I'll show is how to toggle soft and hard body physics simulations. These settings are up here on the top and are on by default. If I turn them off, you'll see the difference when I add in some props. I've added in a hard body pylon and a soft body beach ball, as well as an infinite plane. You'll see that when I press play, nothing will happen as there is no simulation active. I now have the timeline open with the animation tracks for each object. You'll see the infinite plane already has an animation track by default. This track stores the data for your object's interaction with other physics objects. If I go up and activate soft body physics, you'll see that when I play back, the ball will now fall, but no track will appear in the timeline. This is because for soft body physics, there is a tremendous amount of data to calculate for each object, so therefore there are no tracks recorded for it. The ball also falls through the infinite plane because rigid body simulation is not active. So I'll go activate rigid body simulation now, and you'll see that when I play back this time, all objects will interact, and a clip will appear in the pylons animation track. From now on, even if rigid body simulation is off, the pylon will still move in that same fashion in the future. You can learn more about these clips in our future physics tutorials.